How would hemp paper work for watercolors? Let's test that. Hello wonderful people! A few months ago I got some pieces of hemp paper to try as it's supposed to be suitable for all creative media, including watercolors. And I was curious. To test it I only had a few A4 sheets that I cut down into smaller size to be able to test properly. I also had received two types of the paper, the thinner 120 GSM one and the thicker 320 GSM one. I tried out both but have tested the thicker one properly. So that is the one you see me paint on in the video. Let's talk about the company first. The hemp paper is made by a German startup that was founded in 2021. Hemp's goal is to be environmentally friendly by protecting forests by using hemp to make paper. According to their site, which I have linked below, hemp is growing faster and can be harvested more often. That way the amount of paper made from it is bigger than from a comparable area of forest or wood. They claim that the hemp paper is suitable for all mediums, especially watercolors, wash, acrylics, oil, inks and dry media as well. This goes for both thinner and thicker paper. But they also call it mixed media paper. This will be important for reference. When I checked the site earlier, there were creative tutorials available too, which seem to be gone now. At least they were not available anymore when I checked last. In addition, hemp paper is recyclable, which is always a win and needs less or no bleach, which uh, wasn't clear on the side though. First I tried the paper on stream months ago and painted several cat portraits. Thanks to my lovely friends on Discord who allowed me to use the photos of their kitties as reference photos. You can see Admiral and Emerald in the smaller paintings and Canetti in the one painted in the video. The 320 GSM paper is nice and sturdy. It's a nice weight and thickness. The surface is pretty smooth and closer to hot press than to cold press paper. But not as perfectly smooth as hot press paper is. It reminds me a lot of the Canson XL surface. Hanemüller has papers too with the same smooth surface so it wasn't too unusual to paint on. To test the paper I started out slow with a dry medium. Graphite. The pencil did well as expected. I was also able to erase without damaging the surface, which is always good to know. Ink did well too on the paper. It had a nice flow, there was no feathering from the inks I used, which were applied with a fountain pen, black ink, and a bamboo nib, walnut ink. The bamboo nib did catch on the paper a bit, but I'm not sure what caused that. Brush pen did well too, again without any feathering of the ink. When it came to liners, I realized that those felt a little dry on the paper, but it could be due to my liners maybe, as they're a little bit old, as I didn't have the feeling of the paper to be super absorbent. As I never used liners in my personal art, it wasn't as important to me personally either, but I included in a test for those who might be interested. When it came to watercolors, I made a few swatches. The paper does behave well enough. There was no buckling on the swatches, but I did have some during the painting process. Especially during the wet washes, it was very visible. I did not tape it down though. If I had, this could have prevented some of the buckling. What I noticed was that the paper has no or not sufficient sizing for watercolors. It was possible to paint on, but missing sizing will lead to certain behaviors. As water and paint is absorbed by the paper, lifting becomes more difficult. It's a bit easier to glaze down, but corrections are almost impossible. What also happens is that that smooth color application is not always possible. Due to the missing, I'm not sure there, sizing paint will sometimes be absorbed in certain areas more than others and will create dots. You can see it in the background wash in the video. This is something that is also mentioned on their side. Even non-staining pigments were impossible to lift completely, though they lifted someone in the test. In addition, the surface was prone to create blooms. I saw it in the swatches, but you can also see it in the background, where I, and that's fully on me, played with it and even encouraged blooms. So it's not only the paper at fault here. When it comes to granulation, it will be mostly invisible on the paper due to the smooth surface. This is expected though, as granulation needs a rough surface to shine. Something that really impressed me was how the paper handles masking fluid and tape. 
both was removable without any issue, without ripping or damaging the surface after 24 hours. Masking fluid can be a huge problem on wood pulp papers with comparable surface texture and it even can be annoying on cotton papers to use, but on hemp paper no problem at all. That was really a wow moment for me. I want to mention that none of this is a bad thing per se, but I know that those are the things we need to be aware of when we buy paper to see if it will indeed fit our creative needs. While I painted on the hem paper, I actually enjoyed it. It felt nice and I was able to glaze to my heart's desire, which led to the beautiful kitty paintings and their eyes. That was something I really liked and where I'm myself happy with the outcome completely. What I noticed was that I changed my techniques to be able to work with the paper better. I had to think ahead as lifting was impossible. This resulted in harsh edges where I applied paint as it was difficult to soften them once applied. It might cause problems for someone who is not able to adjust their techniques and who relies on lifting. If you like to glaze though, this might be a nice option for you. The paper has some warmth to it, it's not a cool white, which I enjoyed in my paintings and which gave the kitty eyes a warm glow. The pigments look nice on it and I was able to achieve what I wanted with no problem actually. For your info, I used my Schmincke Horadam palette for all of the test paintings. After testing, I was curious about the price of the hem paper. The paper pads come in two sizes of 10 by 15 cm and 30 by 40 cm with 15 sheets each. To compare prices, I chose the prices of pads of Fabriana Artistico, Arches and Hane Mühle Turner, which all are 100% cotton papers. The comparable prices I took from Gastica, a German shop. I figured it's best to compare the prices as they will be available in the same country, so all the prices are in Euro. Please remember that tempo paper is heavier per square meter than the comparison papers, which influences the price too. As you can see, I had to do some math there, as the pads had different sizes and amount of sheets per pad. What jumped out to me was the big difference in price per square centimeter in the hamper paper. The bigger pad was much cheaper than the smaller version. All of the smaller pads were costlier than their bigger comparisons, but this still surprised me. Also, I might be start buying the bigger pads now. The price difference between the smaller and bigger pad was not as high in Fabriano and Arches both. The smallest price difference was in the Hahnemühle paper. It's fascinating to see that the smaller pad of Hemper is more expensive per centimeter per square centimeter than any of the comparisons, while the bigger pad would be still more expensive than Fabriano but cheaper than Arches. It needs to be noted that all the papers are made in Europe, with Hahnemühle being the other paper made in Germany as well. Hanemil is a bigger company though, which might explain the lower prices as they make more paper and sell more too. The price difference in total is not big enough in my opinion to justify the difference in quality. As watercolor artists we use cotton papers for a reason. The sizing allows for better behavior of the paint, smooth washes and more control. The different paper surfaces allow for certain behaviors of the pigments like enhanced granulation etc. Hempa does not show those qualities and I think it doesn't need to. Cotton papers will stay my preference to use with watercolors, but if you compare it to other wood pulp papers, then the hem paper will show some benefits. It's more environmentally friendly, behaves the same, even better with masking fluid. It could be a real asset for ink artists or artists using dry media and wanting a sturdier sur surface to work on. It looks nice and is enjoyable to use, framed like this, with a small startup making this in mind. It actually seems like a decent price again. Because the needs change and hemp paper can fulfill those when you work with ink. I think it will work great with gouache too, which I have not tried out yet. Sorry. I also can say anything about the use with acrylics and oils, as those are not my main medium. In the end, I must admit that I enjoyed playing and painting on hemper paper. I like how the paints look and how easy it was to achieve nice glazes. But I probably wouldn't buy it again for watercolors as I didn't like the missing sizing and how it affected the painting process. 
What I think it would shine with is ink work though, and really worth consideration in my opinion. Also I need to clarify that I compared it to watercolor paper because the company claimed it would work with well with the medium. If compared to other mixed media papers, I think this one would succeed probably due to the better handling of the masking fluid and tape. So let's be fair here. It might be something for next October though. That would be neat indeed and worth the consideration. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see that and maybe whether you yourself have tried hemp paper before. What are your thoughts? Have a wonderful and creative day everyone and I hope to see you soon. Bye!